One UI 6.1 has arrived for a lot of phones. Still not my Galaxy Z Fold 5 though, which is a pain in the butt, but it brought back a feature that they removed in One UI 6.0 and it is now back. It is the OLED screen in burn feature. So it will help with burn in on your OLED display. I know someone was complaining about OLED screen burn in in one of my comments uh, recently, um, and they've readjusted this again. So here's what you can see right from the headline, One UI 6.1 update restores OLED burn in protection. Now they've had it in the navigation part of the, of the phone for basically, that hasn't been removed. But what, what became missing is up in the very top of the phone, right up there, the status bars. Now it it does adjust. It does move every so ever so little, so that screen burning does not occur or is least likely to happen. So when you are 6.1 again had all the cool Galaxy AI features and things like that, but it also in better animations, but it also brought with it back the full screen burn-in protection feature. Next up, Galaxy Z Fold 6 Ultra. Which processor should we see inside of it? Well, the Galax seems to think or know that it's going to be the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Samsung, which would be the same processor that the S24 Ultra has. And I don't think that's really a, a much of a surprise, but what I wanted to give some food for thought is, should Samsung wait a little bit to release these Galaxy folding phones? Months later, usually almost towards the end of the year, sometimes even, I think it's like October or, or, or November, that's when the next generation of Snapdragon processors begin to roll out. I'm talking Snapdragon 8 Gen 4. So it's like you're buying something that's about to be upgraded in a couple of months or a few months, whereas, you know, we're getting, again, not a bad processor. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is a great processor, but it would still be great to see at the time, like I know one year uh, Samsung used the plus version of the, Gal uh, of the Snapdragon processor, which they haven't really been doing lately, but it would be great to see that or wait a couple months maybe and see that. Cause I even, the same thing happens with the Pixel Fold. Pixel Fold comes out with basically the previous processor and then a couple months later, three months later, four months later, the, you get the next generation of the processor. So I almost feel like I know they want to separate the release of these phones, but it'd be so nice to see these phones get the newest hardware, especially when it's only a couple or two to three months later when the next one comes out. I wanted to talk about the successor to the Google Pixel Fold being the Google Pixel Fold 2 and expected specs, price, and release date for that phone because we haven't really spoken a lot about the Pixel Fold 2, a little bit, but not a lot. Mostly about, honestly, the Galaxy Z Fold 6, which I have to admit I'm a little bit more excited about but the Pixel Fold 2 looks really cool, at least the design change that they're going with and I wanted to talk about it, especially after playing with my Pixel Fold uh, a little bit today. So let's talk about the Google Pixel Fold 2. First of all, the processor inside that, there's rumors that they're gonna delay the release about this phone a little bit and push it out when it comes out in time with the Pixel 9 and 9 Pro. If they do that, you're looking at a release date of October for the Pixel Fold 2. Otherwise, you're probably looking at a July release. And if they do that, you're gonna get the Tensor G3. If they wait till October, you're getting the Tensor G4. I'm thinking they're gonna wait until the fall months and release this. So I'm thinking Tensor G4 processor for the Pixel Fold 2. Next up would be 16 gigs of RAM. We saw 12 gigs in the Pixel Fold one, and I think we're gonna see 16 gigs in the Pixel Fold 2. Why? Longevity, especially when they give you seven years of updates. And also it's a premium phone, and I think they wanna make you feel like, you know what, we might not give you the best of the best of the best, but we can give you 16 gigs of RAM. It's not gonna break the bank, especially when you're charging you a lot of money for this phone. 256 and 512 gigs of storage makes sense. I don't think, you might see a one terabyte, but I think the majority of the phones that people buy from them are gonna be 256 and 512. Next up would be the display sizes. They're getting bigger this time around on the Pixel Fold 2. 8.02 inch main display and then 6.4 inch on the outer display, which is again, absolutely insane. These displays are already really large, especially, not even especially, just on, they're big. 
This is so wide. I'm hoping it's not as wide and it's more square like the, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is, uh, especially on the inside display. But then this display is really wide as well. Uh, but it's not that bad to use. It's like a passport type design to it. Camera, or actually not the camera, it's the battery. I think we're gonna see a little bit bigger battery. 5,000 milliamp battery is reportedly what we might see with the Pixel Fold 2. At least that's what I think we're gonna see. We saw 4821 in this phone. I think it's gonna be a little bit bigger, better battery life, being able to use it more throughout the day. So I think we'll see 5,000 milliamp battery. Talking about charging, I don't think we're gonna see faster charging speeds. I think it's gonna be the same, which is like 30 watts wired on there and then wireless. I think it's like 10 watts or something. It's not that fast, maybe 15 watts. Uh, cameras, I think we're gonna see a little bit of upgrade. I actually think we're gonna see Pixel 8 Pro cameras on the Pixel Fold 2. I don't think you see Pixel 9 cameras, but I think it's a Pixel, Fold, a Pixel 8 Pro camera, so I think you'll see the same exact megapixel lineup as you did on that phone, which is still really good cameras. October release, I think we're gonna see that, but there's a possibility it might be summer release. I think it's gonna be October though, and a price of $16.99 on there, which is still really expensive. So new exciting developments for the Galaxy Z Fold 6 Ultra, Galaxy Z Fold 6, and there's gonna be two, let's start with that story first, two FE foldable phones coming out this year. There's a screenshot, I'm not gonna show the screenshot just in case it copyright strikes, but ultimately as you can see from the headline, two foldable Galaxy FE foldable phones. They're gonna end up being Galaxy Z Fold FE and Galaxy Z Flip FE. These are gonna be mid-range phones with some high specs, some low specs, with a middle of the, 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 the road price. So you're gonna get inexpensive Galaxy Flip FE and then Galaxy Z Fold FE as well, less expensive. And there's rumors, remember, that that FE Fold's gonna be like 900 bucks, and then I can only imagine what they would do with the Flip. If, it's really, if, the, if the Fold ends up being 900 bucks, which I don't think it will, but if it is, you've gotta imagine that Flip FE is gonna be like 500 bucks, and maybe they'll get rid of the outside display on that um, to keep the price even lower. So we'll keep our eyes peeled on these ones, but it's crazy, and it's gonna be a crazy, you know, July, August timeframe for Samsung. And then months after, if they end up releasing these FE phones, uh, months uh, after the release of the regular foldables and flips. Next is Galaxy Z Fold 6 and 6 Ultra. Man, a lot of exciting developments coming with this one. So let's start it off. All this information coming from Ice Universe, who starts off by saying the following, that this is the prototype of the Galaxy Z Fold Six. I want to show this first because it shows off what the outside display is going to be, a 22 by 9 aspect ratio. And it still looks like a tall phone, but it's definitely, without a doubt, wider. And I'm going to go comparison dimensions from the 6 to the 5 just to show you that it totally is. So I'm approving of this design. Now it was a little tall seemingly still, but definitely wider, definitely more usable. And there's more exciting stuff about the Z Fold six as well he says that the exclusive galaxy z fold six weight is 239 grams and it finally reaches the first tier level meaning it's one of the lightest foldable phones it weighs the same as the voyager black one plus open and i don't have the black one i have like the i think it's the green one or whatever color that is and it definitely feels pretty good in its weight. Nothing too overbearing, which is always good. He also says that the Galaxy Z Fold 6 standard version has an unfolded thickness of 5.6 millimeters, a folded thickness of 12.1 millimeters, and a weight of 239 grams. The resolution of both the internal and external screens has been improved. That's right. Resolution is higher on the internal and external displays. The internal screen is 7.6 inches, is the same uh, uh, screen size now, and the and it has a 7.6 ratio. And the external screen is 6.3 inches with a 22 by 9 aspect ratio. And I told you someone broke these down, these measurements. And here's the Z, on top. You see the Z Fold 6 and the bottom Z Fold 5. You can see that the when unfolded, it's thinner at 5.6 millimeters, or whole half a millimeter thinner. Folded, again, much thinner, this time 1.3 millimeters thinner on the Fold 6, which is a big improvement. Weight, 253 versus 239, so it's 14 grams lighter. 
internal screen, you can see it's keeping that 7.6 inches, and then the display is a 0.1 inches bigger on the newer version, uh, but the aspect ratio has changed. Exciting, exciting developments on here. Um, he also says the Fold 6 Ultra does exist. There are no detailed parameters on this phone just yet. That might be even more exciting than knowing for sure that the Galaxy Z Fold 6 is gonna be thinner, lighter, wider on the outside display, higher resolutions. Obviously it's gonna be brighter, looking like a really, really nice upgrade, at least physically on this phone. And then the Fold 6 Ultra, we don't even really know anything about it. This could be a blow away phone. This could be the phone we always wanted. Maybe it's not. As you know, these rumors tend to go up and down and left and right, but that's part of the fun of all this. I love it. And uh, even if we don't get the Ultra, Z Fold 6 still looking like a, at least again, on some of these marks, looking like a fairly nice upgrade on the things that we know so far. iPhone Fold is reportedly coming out. And when though, and all of that. So let's kind of talk about that because a new story has just come out of DigiTimes Asia saying that the foldable iPhone feared next Titan as Apple delays launch till 2027. I highly expect it when and if iPhone comes out with a true foldable phone that will compete against the Galaxy Z Fold phones that they are going to sell a lot of these. They're gonna sell millions and millions. This, I feel like, will end up being one of their top selling phones. But at the same time, I kinda of wouldn't be surprised if they just make it a flip phone like the Galaxy Z Flip. And the reason I think of that is because they're going to cannibalize their product line and they don't like to do that. There's, you know, they have their, their iPad Pros and let's be honest, it needs some updating in the software department to make it feel more like a laptop because it has a keyboard attachment and a touchpad and all that stuff and they haven't really done it. And then you look at this, if they come out with a foldable phone, just like the Galaxy Z Fold phone, that's gonna cannibalize their tablet market. It might not have a keyboard attached, but a lot of people still only use the tablet as a tablet. And of course, it's gonna be way more expensive than a tablet. So I don't know, I, I, I highly, I want them to come out with a folding phone because I'd love to try something like that from them. And I would probably just buy that every year over buying like the regular iPhone Pro phone. But I, I don't know, I kind of feel like it's not gonna end up being a folding phone. I hope it is, but I don't kind of don't think it is because I don't think they want to cannibalize their tablets. We'll run through this one real quickly. Galaxy S24 FE, FE Fan Edition, is coming out in summer or should be summer of this year, 2024. So if you're a Fan Edition fan, they came out with the S23 Fan Edition last year. It was a pretty good phone. And this year should be even better than that. How much better? I wouldn't go crazy with it, but definitely a slightly better iteration of it. Now we have some news about the Galaxy Z Fold 6 that is just not appetizing. It's not what I wanted to hear. It's not what I expected, to be honest with you. And it's a bit of a letdown. And this Ultra Phone better come out everywhere because the regular Galaxy Z Fold 6 in some ways looks like a cool upgrade, like I said, mentioned yesterday, with the thinner design and lighter design and wider displays, that kind of stuff. But this is just a complete letdown. Tweet coming up from Ice Universe is saying that regarding the Galaxy Z Fold 6 battery, it is still 4,400 milliamps and has a charging power of 25 watts, which we did talk about last week. So. Definitely a big letdown. It has the same battery size as the Galaxy Z Fold 5, and that phone, for me, doesn't get great battery life. And now, you are making the phone lighter, and thinner, and wider. Put a bigger battery in there for us. We want something bigger. I, I, I mean, for me, it's like, I don't mind if it weighs a little bit more if I get better battery life. And maybe they're looking at it like, hey, we're only gonna throw in 300 more milliamps or 400 more milliamps and in day-to-day -day usage it doesn't make that big of a dent in terms of battery usage that for the user and I think the user would rather have a lighter phone I can see that that makes sense and it's not Samsung's order to detail that to us um, before they even put a phone out and you know rumors are being spoken but even when the phone's released it's not like they do an interview and they're like yeah we made the battery a little bit smaller or the same size because we wanted to uh, 
keep the phone light. They, I just don't feel like they'll say that. They'll make up some corporate lame remark. Uh, so this is definitely, I look at this as a, a stab in the heart in a bit, in a way, because you're gonna get the same battery life, if not worse. I definitely don't expect you to get better battery life with this phone. Galaxy Z Fold 6, we've been hearing a lot about this phone recently within the last couple and few weeks, months even, and I wanted to go through everything that we know thus far because I think it's important to do this, and this stuff will change. Some of this will be incorrect, some of it will be correct, some of it is rumor, so I wanted to go through all of that with you guys right now. First of all, the display, 7.6 inch and 6.3 inch, might be 6.2 inch, 120 hertz on both, 7.6, 7 by 6 aspect ratio on the main display, 22 by 9 aspect ratio on the other display, and both of them are supposed to have higher resolutions. We don't know how much higher resolution, might be a little, might be a lot, I assume it's just gonna be a slightly incremental higher resolution, meaning more pixels per inch, meaning the displays will just look better in general. Now, about those displays, we're thinking, and we kinda know some of this stuff, bigger, wider, brighter, anti-reflective displays, why? Because we know it's gonna be uh, bigger and wider because of the dimensions, which you can see at the very bottom of this. Uh, and then also the fact that the uh, displays generally year over year get brighter. So I expect the same thing to happen with the Galaxy Z Fold 6 and then anti-reflective displays that had it in the ultra version. I think they'll have it, if the, if, the, if the Galaxy Z Fold 6 and the Galaxy Z Fold 6 Ultra both come out, it might not have the anti-reflective displays. It might go over to the ultra version of the Z Fold 6. I still feel like we're gonna get anti-reflective displays on here. 2000 nits brightness, which would be higher than the previous generation. This is kind of a rumor right there. We don't know fully what the nits are gonna be. Could be a little bit lower, could be a little bit higher, could be exactly this. I do expect it to be more nits in terms of its brightness higher than the previous generation. Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for the processor is a complete given, we know this. Uh, it's already been rumored to be this anyway, and the very strong rumors at that. RAM, 12 or 16 gigs of RAM, not completely sure which. I, man, if this Ultra phone comes out, it's probably gonna be 12 gigs on these ones, and then 16 gigs on the Ultras, but I'm still, I wouldn't be surprised if we see 16 gigs on the one terabyte version of this phone, so that's why I'm gonna throw in 12 and 16. Storage 256, 512 in one terabyte. I think that's a pretty much given. That's what they've been doing every single year. I don't think they're gonna cut out the 256 just yet. So I think you'll see 256, 512 in one terabyte. On the storage, as for the cameras, I think we're gonna see the same cameras that we saw last year and the year before that on these phones, which would be 50 megapixel, 12 megapixel, and 10 megapixel uh, for those cameras. Nothing to write home about, but fairly solid cameras in general. Not the best at Samsung has to offer. Thinner and lighter, we should see that with no problem, meaning the body itself, it is gonna be thinner, it is gonna be lighter. Uh, again, that is at the bottom of the page, you can see that right down there. Titanium frame, if I'm not mistaken, we have heard about this as well, that it will have a titanium frame, just like the Galaxy S24 Ultra, so uh, shouldn't be any big surprise. Bigger cooling system, again, not really a bigger surprise. Generally, the cooling system built into the phone is bigger year over year. It was bigger on the S24 series. Expect to see that same carryover to the Z Fold 6 for better performance, better gaming, and better prolonged performance as well as the phone needs to use more processing power. Next bit of information would be the S Pen support. Now, if the Z Fold 6 Ultra has S Pen support, there's a chance the Z Fold 6 might not. I still think it will, but there's rumors that one of the Z Fold 6, definitely the FE, if, if, when and if that comes out, won't have S Pen support, but I kind of expect the Z Fold 6 and Fold 6 Ultra to have pen support. AI integration, again, obviously it's in 6.1, it's gonna have the AI integration, shouldn't be coming as any surprise for that. 4,400 milliamp battery, that's what uh, Ice Universe just told us re use recently, and that's what we can expect with that, which is the same battery size as the Z Fold 5. 25 watt wired and 15 watt wireless. Definitely we know on the wired charging, that's what they're gonna use. Ice Universe confirmed that. And I can't imagine they're gonna go higher than 15 watt wireless. They haven't on any other phones recently and they won't do that on the Z Fold 6 either. Seven years of OS updates, which is 
pretty much given, especially with what they're doing with the S24 series. Expect for that a lot of the same carryover uh, with this phone as well. 239 grams in weight, which would be lighter than last year's Z Fold 5, and put it in line with the black version of the OnePlus Fold phone. 5.6 millimeters unfolded thickness and 12.1 millimeters folded thickness. That's what you can expect with that. And uh, yeah, just, it, you know, the phone's gonna be, and, and I've said it before, in a few ways it'll be upgraded, in some ways it'll be a level playing field with the Z Fold 5, and then in other ways it's time they upgraded and they're not upgrading and it's a bit of a disappointment. I think overall, <clears throat> if this is the only fold that comes to most countries, the Fold 6, and meaning like say we don't get the Fold 6 Ultra and this is what we got, is, is, a, is a bit of a wider display and anti-reflective display potential that much of a difference and you know a faster processor which it's already pretty fast on the z fold 5 a titanium frame you know maybe a little bit more ram is it worth the upgrade <sighs> i don't i don't know maybe it is maybe that bigger display is going to feel uh, the wider display is going to feel a lot different but right now, when I just stare at this, I'm not like, oh God, that's a must have upgrade. One UI 6.1 is out for a bunch of new phones or last year's phones anyway. And you can get it in a lot of places throughout the world. I've got it on my Galaxy Z Fold 5 and obviously my S24 Ultra, but there's issues going around with some of the phones. The first one is the S23 series. There is a fingerprint bug that they are, Samsung's already aware of, but basically what happens is you have to put your fingerprint twice to unlock the phone. They know it's an issue. They're gonna push out a software update sooner than later. Um, exactly when, I don't know, but it will be pushed out. So if you have an S23 series phone and you have the One UI 6.1 software on there and you're having issues with the fingerprint sensor, it's a known issue. They will fix that bug. The other one, has to do with bad battery life on the S23 series and the Z Fold 5. I have to admit, the battery life on here, I wouldn't say is any different than when it, I had Galaxy, the One UI 6.0. It seems very much the same. So I can't be like, oh, it's much worse. It seems very, very similar. So I would say that it sucks. It's not good. Uh, but I also wouldn't say it's One UI 6.1's fault. I think it's just, Galaxy One UI 6 in general, and this phone um, together, the mix, because I feel like on the S24 Ultra, I get really good battery life, and that has One UI 6.1, but on the Z Fold 5, which is the only other phone I have One UI 6.1 on, besides the S24 Ultra, it never had good battery life anyway. I wasn't really expecting it to get good battery life after this update anyway, and plus remember, the battery is 4,400 milliamps, and having to power up this huge, massive display all alone by itself, is obviously going to use a lot of battery life. So other than that, the, the One UI 6.1, um, I did have a little bit of touch responsiveness issue with the with Galaxy Z Fold 5 this morning. I had to, I restarted my phone and that fixed the issue. Um, other than that, it's been okay. It hasn't been as smooth as I've wanted it to be in terms of like going from 6.0 to 6.1. It feels a little bit smoother, but I wouldn't say, oh damn, that's amazing now. It's Perfect, it, I wouldn't go that far. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I have the AI features and stuff and all that. Galaxy S24 Ultra, it's like, I feel like we don't have a week or two where we don't talk about some future update coming for this phone that's going to fix said problem with the phone. But before I get into the update at hand, I wanna talk about how I, I don't have really any problems with the phone. I, I see it on Twitter a lot, like people saying, oh, I sold my phone, I couldn't stand it, it has this update, it has that update. Now, I can see some of those issues with the Galaxy Z Fold 5, like having slowness or bad battery life or the camera's not up to snuff, but I still love my Galaxy Z Fold 5. But the S24 Ultra, I feel like, is a step ahead. And sure, it's an Ultra versus just a regular Z Fold 6, but even beside that fact, I feel like they've pretty much nailed it with this phone and could they always improve it or, you know, incrementally? I, yes, they could. They could do some things. It's not perfect, but it's near perfect and it's a freaking really, really good phone. And I just don't have any things that nag at me about this per se 
that I do maybe on some other phones that I've used. And the update in hand, again, you probably could probably guess it, would be Ice Universe's tweet saying that the S24 Ultra will improve many camera problems in the next camera firmware update, including telephoto image quality, inaccurate white balance, and abnormal red color, but they have not given an accurate timetable. He's saying he's hoping it can be April and uh, someone asked in the comments, like April, he said May or June. So it could come out anywhere from now to the next four months. I would guess that if he's mentioning this, he probably knows a little something inside. So I would guess it's probably gonna be either in April or May, which we're already in April and the update should be rolling out soon anyway for if uh, anyway. So I would guess April or May would be the update for the big cameras on there. But like I said, I don't really have any problems with it. I love when I take some photos on here, I'm like, damn, it came out pretty freaking sweet. I'm definitely loving the cameras on this. So I don't know, put in the comments down below. Are you having issues with your S24 Ultra cameras? Let us know in the comments down below. Get the word out there. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road. Peace.